A drop of rain might not be enough to get you wet, but if you stand outside long enough in a storm, soon you'll be soaked. That's because even if something doesn't have a big impact on its own, things add up. In part one of Footprint, we discuss the climbing caribou populations and the effects of multiple activities on their habitat. Moving forward, it's important to keep in mind that the caribou population is just one example of how a species is affected by disturbances. And throughout the series, we're going to be introducing a number of other examples to help put things into perspective. If you want to understand what is happening to caribou, you need to understand not just one, but a whole suite of different forces acting on their habitat. You need to look beyond one drop of rain at the whole storm. We call that combination cumulative effects. Cumulative effects refers to the combined effects of past, present, and reasonably foreseeable land use activities over time on the environment. For example, take linear disturbances. Linear disturbances are things like access roads, transmission lines, or any line feature on the land resulting from a human activity. When these combine and interact with one another and with other disturbances, they can significantly change the landscape and ecosystem. Even though our environment is resilient and capable of bouncing back from a certain amount of human-caused or natural pressures, some impacts might not become evident until many years later, especially when the accumulation of disturbances exceeds the environment's ability to recover from them without help. If we look at just one linear disturbance, it looks relatively harmless. It's not until we zoom out just a tiny bit that we're able to see that this one line is part of a network of several competing uses. And while we humans can use these linear features to get to tough-to-reach areas, it's not necessarily a good thing, especially when we look at how these lines affect surrounding ecosystems. Imagine a wolf. If we follow this wolf, we will see that this line feature makes it easier for it to travel. It just so happens that the openness of these corridors is also preferred by the wolf's prey, like moose and deer, who feed on the shrubs and grasses that grow in abundance here. More distance traveled by the wolf means more opportunities to stumble upon its prey and other species, like the caribou. Meaning linear disturbances not only divide up the landscape, they also create an open highway for predators. Where's the proof? Take a look at the declining trends in woodland caribou populations. Generally speaking, new developments on the landscape need to be approved. In the past, this usually meant processing industrial development and land use decisions on a project-by-project -project basis. However, it's been demonstrated that in areas with rapid population and economic growth, this uncoordinated system can lead to some unanticipated outcomes. But when we consider all cumulative effects as a whole, we can map out the best possible and responsible use. Here's what a plan looks like in action. Trevor Wallace from Alberta Agriculture and Forestry will run us through the Bow River Phosphorus Management Plan, why it was created, the process they took to create the plan, and some of the key strategies and outcomes. Hey, uh, the Bow River Phosphorus Management Plan was really created for two reasons. Uh, the first being there was a concern on water quality within the Bow River Reach, partly because the area accounts for about 2% of the province and has about a third of the population growth in it. Uh, the other reason the Bow River Forest Source Management Plan was started was because of the land use framework. Uh, within the framework, there are management responses. Uh, if a threshold is exceeded, the question is how we get everybody together, all the parties involved, to address that exceedance. Why do we care about phosphorus levels? Why is it important that we're managing them? Uh, one of the reasons we're managing phosphorus are nutrients on the landscape. When it gets in water, it promotes plant growth. It also promotes algae growth. And one of the algae is called blue-green algae. When that material dies, it releases a toxin, which is harmful to people and animals if consumed. Uh, the problem with the extra plant growth in the water is not just uh, from a recreational use point of view. When that material dies, it sucks up oxygen. That affects fish, and we can result in fish kills. So the reason we're doing all this is reducing the amount of nutrients going in the water because the nutrients have an effect on plant growth, and the plant growth ultimately, when it dies, affects fish. 
So we need to manage phosphorus in part because phosphorus leads to algae growth, and when certain algae die, they can release toxins that can kill fish. Um, did we do that? So the, the process was successful, and then it you know, identified where we were. It created that baseline, and there's no one solution to what we're dealing on the landscape, and that's why continuous improvement is so important. Uh, it's going to take several activities to come towards a solution. When we start with continuous improvements, bite-sized pieces, so we make little bit incremental changes, either because of technology adaptation or, or new technologies. There is no set point in this. It's always flowing. It's dynamic. So not only uh, the issue that we have today, it's going to be slightly different tomorrow because of increased population, changes in land use, changes in management. So our responses to that are always going to be changing. So it's, it is essentially continuous improvement where we're making tweaks in the system because the system is always changing. So as we heard from Trevor, by planning for cumulative effects, we're able to manage and preserve some of Alberta's most valuable assets, all of which are vital to the health and livelihood of everyone in Alberta and beyond. Since the impacts of our activities are not immediately evident, it's important for us to think more broadly about how our actions today can affect the landscape in the future. As part of the government of Alberta's move towards an outcome-based system, we undertake a process called regional planning that helps us account for cumulative effects of development and better balance those desired outcomes. Planning provides a roadmap so we collectively know where we want to go and provides a process to respond to those detours that come up along the way. Join us in part three of Footprint, where we discuss planning as a tool. This video is part two of a five-part series to help introduce, build awareness, and understanding for some land use and environmental management topics. We encourage you to learn more about how we can better manage our footprint by visiting the Government of Alberta website at www.alberta.ca.